me in the beginning. And try to finish by 3 party today. So we have been studying spot symmetry breaking. And what we saw is that to face whether at one loop supersymmetry is broken or not, we have to look at a specific amplitude. And that amplitude is a two-point function on the torus. Okay, let me write this as norm of 2 and g is 1. This will be the amplitude involved in g is i gamma and lambda the alpha. Xi gamma is a conjugate to the um, possible goal zero, that's again zero. The lambda zero alpha is the uh, generator of supersymmetry to lowest order. We we'll worked out a specific form of this. So this is uh, C bar C, eta it will be pi by 2, sigma theta gamma, g bar. And this was C. Minus pi by 2 sigma. The one point to notice that both are in the minus half itself. Okay, because that's the way you have set it up, we shouldn't get anything other than minus half and minus 2 half. The two point functions will be, should be defined only for minus half itself. And this doesn't look like minus half in the sense that there is going to be a plus pi by 2 instead of it to be minus pi by 2. But eta, if you look at the counting, has fixed number minus 1, so that is what makes this minus 1. So this means that we need one picture changing operator on the torus. Okay, again, this is expected from the usual count. Right? Two formulas, two formulas, two part formula amplitude on the torus. Right? Two formulas will give a minus half. So you should get one picture. One. Now, one <coughs> simplification that occurs here is that both of these are actually dimension zero primaries. So, okay, we can easily check. This is of course dimension zero primary. Right. C has dimension minus 1, this together has dimension plus 1. Okay. And here again you can count okay, the dimension of this and you will find this is a dimension 0 primary. So because both of these are dimension 0 primaries, we don't have to worry about the local coordinate system that we are choosing. Okay. Otherwise you have to worry about choosing the local coordinate system correctly according to factorization and so on. But the result actually is independent of the choice of local coordinates. I don't know about this. Maybe we can now close this. However, the piece of location is important. Okay, not the exact location, but we have to choose a piece of location in a way so that it is consistent with factorization. Okay, so, what is consistent? Consistent with the generation you make. And the element degeneration limit here is the degeneration limit where these two water supporters come close to each other. So, okay, that's the only separating type degeneration that you have. Okay, on a total two part function, you separate any separation okay, between two parts of the one surface happens when two water supporters come close to each other. Because in that limit, we have Two of these are here, so the picture is that we have a long handle. On this side, we have a torus. These are the two parts of the torus. 
sorry, what, what did you say about the, uh, it, it has to be, the result has to be consistent in the degeneracy unit. Yes. Uh, and it has to, I mean, it has to do something with the PC location being important? Yes. So, we'll go to the DSGS guy, let's start fine. Okay. So, the vortex top part, these are in the minus half, right? So in the in this degeneration limit, so this should involve a physical three-part function. Right? This is a three-part function on the sphere. Okay. A physical three-part function means that here the body of part that should in, you should do insert, that's the sector body of part. That must be the minus one feature. Right? When the NS sector is propagating, in this body of part must be the minus one feature. This is the minus one feature. And that will also ensure that the conjugate state here is in the minus one picture, this is in the minus one picture, and that's our properties. Now, by simple counting, we can see that here you have total picture number minus two. Right? So you shouldn't insert a picture now sending on part here. Here you have total picture number minus one, or a total you need total picture number zero. So the picture sending on part should be here. Or minus half, okay, but not 
então, não vai isso. Eles esqueçam da API, eles acham que é o corpo peito. Sir, one very naive question. Yes. Uh, it is that uh, this picture that you have drawn. So mm -hmm. there, there, there is a torus and there is a cylinder and there is a sphere. Yeah, yes. So topologically, this is like uh, torusing again, right? Yes, it is a torus. So on torus, uh, we know that the uh, picture number uh, should be uh, zero total. That's right. So if we add all of these, are we getting? Zero? Yeah, it is zero. Minus some, minus some one. Okay, that is one. Right. Okay. So because you to all all together you insert one picture number of pictures in your operator on the torus. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. The only question is where to insert it. Mm -hmm. right? And what we are saying here is the way you must insert it is such mm -hmm. that when two vortex operators come close to each other, mm -hmm. the other one should be away from it. Mm -hmm. The pictures in your operator should be away from it. That will do the job. Okay. Right? That corresponds to putting the pictures in your operator here. So this is one, and these are minus half, minus half, and what about the one that is going to? Be? So uh, minus half, minus half. You have to put a minus one. Okay. See, once you put minus half, minus half, and you say you will not put any other picture in your operator. Okay. You are forced to insert a correct operator in the minus one picture. Okay. Because the total picture number should add up to minus two. Okay, for the sphere. For the sphere. Yeah. Right. If you put a minus one here, then this state is a conjugate state. Okay. That should be minus one. Mm -hmm. This should be the conjugate to this. That's again minus one. Mm -hmm. This should be conjugate to this. That's minus one. Mm -hmm. And the picture chain you operate is kept put here, mm -hmm. which has picture number plus one. Mm -hmm. So that you add up to zero. Here. Yeah, just one, zero here. But considering it, uh, whole of it as. Uh, if you consider the whole of it, yeah. then only thing you will see is that two picture chain you operate is minus or minus of here. Okay. Right. And one is your. Okay. Right. So we not we need not consider the in between. Yeah, because these are part of the intermediate state. They are become both, right? Okay. If we just think of this as a whole product, you will think of two pictures, here, two goddess of part and one picture. Yes. Okay. So again, the counting words have to be zero on the torus. Okay. Is this so? Yeah, because yeah, when we are considering it as just one, then there is no cube kind of. Exactly. Okay. Here is just a torus. Yes. Okay. So if you do this, right, that fix y at zero, right? Let the other vary. Okay, you have to integrate over y. And put the picture in your operator at a position that is not equal to zero. Then you can check that it satisfies the factorizing condition, right? Because the degeneracy is when y goes to zero. Right? And by construction, because of e is not equal to zero, right? At the degeneration, you have kept away from the picture chain. Because so this will be all possible to implement um, this factor as well. This thing of putting the picture thing operator here so that only minus one picture is popular. Yes. This was essentially derived using string theory. Exactly. So suppose I did not know string theory. Then you have to assume this. Then you have to, well, because if you don't uh, fix this rule right. from some considerations, right, then you will typically get the wrong answer. So string perturbation theory by itself doesn't tell us. I mean, the way yeah, the nice part of the theory by itself doesn't get us. Right? Well, the point is, uh, we did our good that if you start with the supermodulized space, right? Then there's a natural compactification of the supermodulized space, which from which you, in principle, can derive what a picture theory of what is. Except that you don't know how to go translate back and forth between the supermodulized space and picture theory of what is completely. But in principle, I see. There are two things to be able to do to to show that the PC should be. Yeah, basically, the, yeah. If, if one understands the genesis, right? right? See, string perturbation theory, as yeah. stated naively, that you just integrate over the modulized space, right? That would be somewhat incomplete because modulized space is boundaries, right? So, you have to specify in addition what to do with those boundaries, right? How to integrate at those boundaries, right? What we can call uh, conditionally convergent integrals because integral typically diverges. To make sense of those integrals, you have to first define a cutoff, then see if the thing converges or not. Right? It's like if you have an integral like integral d to z over z cube. So you have an integral like or it will reduce over z square. Okay. Now you need to do power counting, this is all the better. Right? It goes as dr over r. But if you Define the integral in such a way that you cut off 
something around z equal to 0. Okay? Then what would happen is that the divergent piece, okay, the, which was going as 1 over r over r, then the e to the 2i that are so independent. Okay? That gives you 0. So neither it's divergent by power counting, but after the rule of the time it's not divergent. Okay? But to do that, to see that it's not divergent, you have to give a prescription of how to cut off near the boundary. Okay? If you have chosen not the circular boundary, but it's a very complicated boundary, it's a line, right? Suppose you have chosen the cutoff to do something like this. Okay, then this procedure may not work. So you have to specify the addition how you treat the boundaries. String field theory, the Iman rules that one gets from there, automatically implements that term in the procedure. Okay? Yeah, the, how you treat the boundary is part of uh, string field theory, right? because in string field theory you don't have arbitrary pictures in your part. This is the same, the, even in the mosaic string theory, right? this doing compatibility okay? precisely achieves that. Okay? What otherwise you would have to specify uh, explicitly for you try to define it because not the boundary. Is that string to the x? Yes. Here, uh, take the states to be completely minus 1 or is minus 1. So, yes. It's a number is minus 1. The host number is minus 1. Host number is Yes. Okay. Yeah, the host number is. Because there's nothing. Uh, uh, there's no ambiguity in what a host number is. Right? If there's an ambiguity, you have to somehow out of the host number. That's what happens in the loops. Right? Here, for example, the host number of the state that's propagating, they're automatically fixed. Is this okay? Okay, so this is a specific procedure that comes from string theory. Right? Okay. If you want to derive a full PCO prescription from supermodulized space, right, then this probably is a natural compactification of the supermodulized space. Okay, which should again give rise to this prescription. Okay, but right now we think of this as inherited from string theory right? okay. that one PCO should go on the other side in this way. So in this, let's try to drag the integration measure. Thank you. 
So, so these are the four regions that we will use. And if boundary is C1, C2, okay, these are the boundaries between these two. And this is another boundary, C3, and this in fact is another boundary, C4, which is identified because the torus is periodically damped. So let's see how we can what kind of coordinate system we can choose. So we we'll choose on D1, W1 is just it. Okay, this is a local coordinate system around the world. On D2, W2, we we'll choose to be u minus 1. So, okay, so the function is at W k equal to 6. On D3, we choose W k equal to 2. And on D4, we choose W4 to be u minus 1. So let's see how the transition functions look. So on C1, this is the boundary between D1 and D3, and W3 is just W1. On C2, which is here, W3 is W2 plus 1. On C3, which is here, and on C4, which is here. Okay. 
So this pin can be inside B tau. Okay, this is B tau is the analog of this Bi. So B tau will be sine length once this. Why about C3? Because C3 is the boundary between these two. And C3 is the boundary between the W4 and the W3. And the procedure that we had described earlier also tells you very specifically what the orientation of C3 should be. So this should be B4 on the line. Side. 
hands are very eyes. This extra importance of operators. Then there are terms where you pick one at a time. See, this comes only once, right? This can give you at most one factor of okay? Either beta or beta bar or dy you know, or dy. But you cannot give get beta or beta bar from here. Right? So, it will be some of four terms okay? where in the first term, for example, you replace beta by this combination. Okay? So, in beta, you replace it by lz e del tau times lz z e and then you have beta bar e y e y bar and z e sin gamma zero then z bar is alpha yes the minus yes. Okay. And the other point is that the way, the, the, in writing it this way, you don't have to worry too much about signs as you move it. Because there is a dx, right? so when you move it through, through forms, it will become a minus sign, when you the lowest product. But it's also multiplied by anti commuting object. So it becomes another minus sign. Right? So you never have to worry about the sign. You can put the whole thing together and place it anywhere in this product. Right, and that's the same reason why this makes sense, right? Because bi dx i to square, right? It makes sense because bi anti com, bi is anti but dx i is also anti com. That's why bi dx i whole square is the sensible thing. Okay. Z p will, will be v at the end. Right now, we are saying that let's start to work on. So z p is the location of the PCO. We'll fix z p appropriately. Right? Also, the definition of the degeneration. Well, I have said it here, but you will see that you cannot choose it to be fixed to a, uh, to a complete fix. If you allow v to be a function of y, you can replace it by v, right? But we will reserve the v symbol for something else. Okay. When I wrote that we put the PCU at v, I had in mind that v is fixed. That v shouldn't change and y moves. Right? Because then, as y moves sometimes, uh, as y goes to 0, v may come to 0, right? That's, we don't want to apply that, right? But you will see that it is not possible to keep v fixed completely. Okay. So then we are, so if you include the subtlety, yes, zp is v. Okay. For that, of the purpose, zp will be set equal to v. So, okay. But right now, we are just thinking of zp as an arbitrary function of y. Okay. Let's see what happens. Okay, then there will be minus L Z P L tau bar L Z Z P I see this should come later because first B tau because you have to move it to the B tau bar position then comes this then B y B y bar and then G Z I come from 0 lambda 0 alpha Minus e tau e tau bar L Z P Y Just by it, it's basically expanding it out. So, 
So I will soon see that things simplify a lot. So let's recall the definition of B Y bar. So B Y bar was integral B U bar. This I am not here now keeping track of the sides. And this integral is done around the circle C2, right, which is around Y. So this means the integral is around Y. Yes, because here was Y and then there is C2. If we look at the original definition of UI bar, right? Because the Y enters the transition functions across C. Right? That's why you got an integral around C. So in order for this to be non-zero, okay, when you insert this in a correlation function, in order for this integral to be non-zero, you need as a function of U a pole at u is equal to y. This is your y. Right? A pole of the form 1 over u bar minus y bar. If we didn't have a pole, then by a series theorem this will be 0. Then to it's a anti-homomorphic function. b bar of u bar. Right? As a correlation function, it's the anti-homomorphic function of u bar. Right? Or a homomorphic function of u bar if we have poles and so on. But unless it has pole inside this circle, you get 0 at this So let's see what vortex of order is there at y. Okay? That vortex of order is lambda 0 alpha of 1. Lambda 0 alpha of y is c e to the phi minus pi by 2 sigma alpha of 1. Okay? And you can see that b bar has no pole. So which means that all of these terms where there is a b y bar, these terms are identical zero. Because each b y bar involves in doing a control integral of b u or b by u bar around u y. Okay, and those control integrals are spanish. Okay. So this is zero, okay. this is zero, this is zero, this is zero, only one term of this, the last term. Yes, unless it comes inside this, right? You are fine. PC will take to the outside this circle. And that can be done on this. We'll see what can be done. So the first term could be non zero. First term could be non zero if the PCO comes inside. Yes, that's it. Okay, if the PCO location comes inside, then the first term could be non zero. So I do assume the first term will be non zero. No, we will set it to be 0 assuming that ZP is always outside. Okay? Well, where is all this question from, from DLZ? Well, DLZ of course, I mean, let's see, E has never any pole DLZ anywhere. Right? So only here we could have gotten a contribution. But there is a time inside. There is a DLZ. See, all of these are, oh, it's just DLZ. Yeah. So you can be atmosphere. Exactly. So you can be atmosphere. Is this clear? So at the end we get Integral d tau will be tau bar, which y
Ester. Right. 
you think that we will solve this problem? That no, no, we don't know. But let's go on separate time. Right? If you keep z, you keep z. Typically, the point is there are spurious holes. <coughs> I mean the y, right? So the integral over y, okay, even though it looks like it's non-singular, that OP doesn't have problem. Integration over y will eventually run into a problem because of the singularities. Okay? So now the question is how to avoid those singularities. Is this part clear? So sorry, how do we know that this will have a spurious form? Because it's a correlation function on the torus, right? There are, we can explicitly talk about right now the correlation function right? using the xi, the phi okay. uh, correlation function, right? And you can see explicitly there are geometric factors right? whose singularities okay, are not controlled by OP. Okay. So if you look at OP, it's showing that there is no spurious code, you will actually get spurious codes from that. So if I write down the full torus correlation function, then one can see explicitly that there will be. Exactly. That's it. Function y and y bar, is it still something about Pardon? So, if you delta it, then y bar is it still function of y bar? Yeah, let me prove a function of y and y bar. Right? But the point is, y dependence doesn't matter because what? The yeah, inter series is del y bar. So, it's only the y bar. Exactly. Yeah. And it's because of the same reason that even if this had a code, this had been set to 0 from the beginning, right? even before you went to that stage. First time, because whether Z P is fixed or not fixed, right? You can always choose Y bar contour to be sufficiently close, by, right? You can always introduce Z P in a coordinate system outside the the spurious coordinate system. Isn't Z P the point of Y bar also then tells tells us it's supposed to be holomorphic? Is Z P the function? So the yeah, delta means it's a variation with respect to ZP. ZP is a holomorphic variable. Okay. That's a function of Y bar. Yeah, but that ZP you can take as a function of Y and Y bar. See, so you think of the formal function of ZP, right? ZP is an argument. Right? If you are calculating the correlation function, correlation function will be a holomorphic function of ZP. Right? But then you have the choice of varying ZP in whatever you like, right? And that variation you can take to have all anti holomorphic dependence on y1. That's only one we Exactly. I mean, for example, if you have something like 1 over y, say zp minus a, and then zp can be a function of y and y1. So then the, this is not a holomorphic function of y and y1. But nevertheless, it, it will diverge when this function is equal to a. Yes, and you have uh, problems. Is this part clear? Okay. So here the reason that this is not identical is zero is because of the spurious poles. Okay, if there are no spurious poles, then you would control that this is zero. These Fermi differentials also have this repeating function, which is the change of the uh, transition function along the circle. That's right. So here they don't appear. They are just constants, right? Because yeah, when you looked at the relation between W I I and W J. Right? Linear functions. It's it, it's just a constant actually. It's a delta, it, there's a delta tau or delta y, but y multiplies it has no dependence on uh, the coordinate, right? Just one. Yeah, just one or minus one, right? So that's why this integer. Otherwise, you have to some function multiplying it. Okay, but here the trivial in the way you have chosen the. The one even if there are spurious poles, right? It's zero point by point, right? So you can because you can choose, choose to do the y bar integral first, right? Over as a function. Okay. This is B Y bar, right? This is yes, argument of B. I need a C. Exactly. Argument of B has no spurious point, right? It's only when the size and it has come in, then you can get spurious point. Right? That's why Y would have spurious point, right? Because this guy needs to be 5 by 2 sitting inside this.
뭐, 저도 오해가 많으면, 간결했다고 하는 부분이 다 보니. So let's suppose that z d s which is a function of tau and tau tau r, tau and y, and the location for the s e q u e n c e not tau and y, just the tau and z. Yes. So, then we have no spurious p o l e s inside. 
You can do anything. Is it yeah. Z equals to W or Z P equals to W? Z P equals to W, yes. Z P. Oh. So you are saying that as we do the integration outside, outside the circle and then we will... Integration inside the circles, right? When you are doing integration outside the circles, you use the picture chain you have parted at V, right? When you are trying to do the integral inside this circle, you take the picture chain of part of it out. So this change from equal to W should be around those sections. Yeah, so those will be the vertical sections, right? Because you are changing from V to W okay. across the boundary without changing it. Okay, this is besides the idea of body right? That when you encounter the speed of you just change your location, PC your location, right? That's what you mean by going up in the vertical direction, right? So going up is like this is maybe V and that's W, right? <coughs> Changing the PC your location. So this has the effect that because of this, and because Zp is constant both outside and inside, there is no contribution from either the outside or the inside. Okay? So the only contribution that you have to deal with are the contributions from the particle segments. Is this clear? The result that one gets by doing this. Okay, again, after normalization, I have not made the other normalization. So you are, you are getting basically sum over all S's because you have to pick them up, sum over this computer integrals. Sum over S, integral P tau, P tau R. Okay, this is of course over a fundamental domain. Integral PY. Okay, and this integration is over Cs, those contours, that C tilde dies. And then inside we have xi of W, xi of P minus xi of W. Another thing we will do, this is what is this? I wanted to put 
untuk tayang di Edward. Tayang kan enggak biar di Okay. So now, <laughs> the second point is that this exposure has been written in the small universe. Okay, because everything involves only the uh, derivatives of size, or right? the differences between size. But the correlation function that I had written down earlier, that was in the large universe space. The size is a high correlation function that uh, for which we have an explicit expression. That's in the large universe space. Right? So it's useful to now rewrite as an expression in the large universe space. So for this, all I have to do is I have to just insert as i of w naught and e w naught and put a prime here. Okay, now it's really clear. So this prime denotes that this is in the large inverse space okay. Simply because this is the only size which can supply the formula zero. So the size zero, right? This has to be used up in soaking up the size zero more. So the it's a manifest property of the correlation function that I have written now that a correlator of this form will not depend on the choice of the one. This is a highly non-obvious property. If you just look at the correlation function, it's hard to see. Okay, it requires some effort to actually prove that this is the case. But if we accept it, then we can make life simpler for us by simply choosing W0 equal to W0. Choose W0 equal to W0. Okay? And so then this integer becomes psi of the psi t. Okay, because i w is i w is zero. Okay, two formulas at the same point. So i w is i b. Two thousand. Two thousand. I'll not. I'll forget about the b y now. C bar c to the power by two. C bar c by one. C bar zero. And two minus i by two. C bar zero by two. Okay. So let's call this a of y. This whole function. It's also a function of tau, of course. Okay, but uh, we have to write it as a of tau y. Tau. This concept is only of tau. No, it is not. Why got complained in the has been done? No, this is b. This is b. Oh, that was over u. See, y is the location of the vortex of water. Right? So that is a separate integer. Because that's a part of the integration method. This is like the integration of the water. Yeah, so that bu okay. was integral du, du, right? When u was integrated around y. Right? So this u integral weight. Right? That removed the bu. You get the C. Right, so this gives you 1 over u minus y. Right? And the u integral you get. Okay? Setting u equal to y. Okay? Reducing u is just 1. Okay? So that basically remove this C and then give us like this. Okay? But the integration over y is different because this is part of the model. Okay? To begin with, you have integration over y and y. Right? The y bar integral went down because you are supposed to integrate over this co-dimension one subspace of the modern space. Right? In integral is zero, exterior is zero, only on a boundary is non zero. Right? So you have to pick up pick a co-dimension one subspace, then that's why the y bar integral went down. Right? But the y integral is still there. That's a contour ratio. Right? You are basically have to integrate over this contour. Right? So these contours have to be distinguished from the this contour. This is a u contour, right? This is the definition of b. Because you have to define the wide measure, you have to do some integral or contour integral over okay. 
The fact that this can be interpreted as a control integral, that is highly logical and that's very specific to these kinds of problems. Right? In general, it's a good algorithm integral right? that you have to do all the problems. So the location of the hardest of part have to be integrated over the uh, over the two dimensional towards. <coughs> What, what happens to the eta in the last line? So eta is very much there, I think I forgot the eta.
So this delta basically means that you are calculating this correlation function in the spin structure delta. Okay, so let me just try to explain what we have done there. Because this actually comes after some steps. So the idea is that see, here you have two xi, xi w xi v eta is at zero. See what's eta? Eta is at zero. So xi w xi v eta at zero, and it will be i. It will be phi by two zero. It will be minus phi by two i. Okay. So a product of xi is eta, and it will be plus minus phi by two. Okay. So we are explicitly written down this correlation function in terms of the Okay, the law. So you can write that theta function, okay, that correlation function. And then you will be left with only the these beta or beta over C bar C and the matter fix. Sigma delta and sigma alpha. Okay? So you could have written this answer in that form. The only problem of writing the answer in that form. Either there are possible phase ambiguities, okay? Because it will have fractional parts here and there, okay? And here, for example, this equally minus five by two and three five by two not be there. So this will not be there, okay? Which will be a perfectly good answer, except that these correlation functions, as we saw yesterday, right? These have OPs which are branch ones. So there is always a worry about what a phase is, what a correct phase is. Okay. So it's best to always write things in terms of these combinations. Okay. So what we do is that we take that expression and we com compare it with the corresponding expression that we get here. This also can be from this we can also pull out again the xi to the phi by two to the minus phi, phi by two correlation function. Right? So you can write down a corresponding expression here. And what you have done is you have just taken the ratio and expressed it in terms of this, which is a better defined object. Okay, so you calculate the original correlation function in terms of what we have written down, xi eta phi correlation function. We have compute this in terms of the xi eta phi correlation function, and the ratio is this object. Okay, here as you can see there is a fractional part. Okay, if you are trying to strip this off, okay, there will be fractional part here, and then you have to worry about the phases. So fractional powers are due to just phi. Due to phi. Well, there is fractional power due to phi and similarly fractional power due to phase, which will eventually combine. So once you write it this way, this will have no fractional power, right? That's why this is a better defined object to deal with. Okay, but otherwise the procedure is that we just calculate the ghost, the beta gamma system correlation function explicitly using the quadrant form. And the spurious poles are the zeros of this. Yes. Uh, if we have computed the psi eta phi of that, why is our state the psi eta? Yes, because we re expressed, so we, if we have computed the psi eta phi, right, then there will be no phi's or no psi eta, right, only matter fields and the PC goes fields, right. So what we did is that we first got that expression, then we Note that that expression has some phase ambiguity. Right? So what we do is that we compare it with this expression, with the expression for this. Right? Which again, from this we can pull out psi to the phi by two and to the minus phi by two. Okay? And then we do the ratio, and the ratio is this. Okay, so you are right that if you have done the one step process, everything will have been gone, right? There should be no xi to phi error, right? You will get a correlation function that is left in the VC system and the matter system, right? But we just try to make things more well defined by putting these things back. Okay, and this is still in the large inverse space. Yeah, but this removes the eta. Again, it also removes the xi. There are two xi's ah, yeah, yeah, and one eta, right? So what I have done here is that we basically have removed one xi and one eta from this. Is this okay? okay? And now, of course, 
we will go back to a small hit bus space because there is one single side, nothing else. Right? So the result is independent of the of this side, right? So you can remove this and remove the back. Okay, so you can re-express things back in the in the small hit bus space.
Then in the matter sector, you only have G1, right? And nothing else. Then we have, we have a, a, a matrix element of G1 in the matter sector. Okay? And that matrix element vanishes just by CPT. Okay? Because on the nodes, so you have uh, states propagating, right? For every state propagating, there also its conjugate state. Right? So the matrix element of G1 itself is Z1. So that shows that there is no pole as a function of okay. And on the total, a function without a pole is a constant. Okay, this is a standard result in the on theory of function for the total. Okay. So that basically means that this is constant as a function of okay. which actually is not yeah. surprising, right? Because after all, what was V? V was the location of the PCO. Right? So you better be that things don't depend on V. Right? So it's consistent that at the end after doing this analysis, we are actually finding that the result is indeed independent of V. Okay? So once you know that it's independent of V, okay, we can evaluate by setting V so is this okay with the J term survive? J term, yeah. The if the J term didn't survive, then of course the result will be zero, right? Okay. First term doesn't survive. First term doesn't survive, yeah. Okay, so now we can evaluate it by setting V equal to zero. Okay. And when you set V equal to zero, basically you pick this J J bar. J J bar, right? of course, is non singular. J is holomorphic, J bar is anomorphic. Right? So they are perfectly non singular product. Okay. So by setting V equal to 0, you get the amplitude. Go from the integral V tau by V tau bar. Actually, it's very easy to evaluate because what one can show is that now you can rewrite as a trace, right? Because it's a torus matrix element, so you can write it as a trace. Okay. And in that trace, only the mass is this one. Okay. Basically, what happens is that you can say J J bar, right? So J is the chiral current, J bar is the anti chiral current. Right? And what one can show is that all massive states are actually pair. Okay. They have equal J and J, positive J and negative J. It's only in the massless sector, okay, the contribution to the chiral multiplex, okay, have the feature that positive J is accompanied with positive J1 and negative J is accompanied with negative J1, right? So J and J1 are correlated. Okay, which you know, right? In, in chiral multiplex, for example, you don't have to have equal number of uh, chiral multiplex with of a given charge. Right? For a chiral multiplex of a given charge, you can have anti-chiral multiplex of an opposite charge. So the J charge determines whether it's a chiral or anti chiral one. J bar is a U1 charge. So the only term that only states that contribute are the massless states. Okay. So the integral over D4K of the massless states okay, is gives you 1 over tau plus square. And you basically get integral D2 tau over tau plus square times a constant. Okay, this constant can be calculated for the spectrum of massless states. Okay, and in general, this is not zero. Okay, so this is what shows that in this class of compactifications, okay, the super spectrum will be broken at a quarter by five. Okay. Unless this constant is zero. Okay. So in the very special case, it may happen that after some sum of our states, the constant vanishes. Okay. Because it suddenly gets contribution from both positive and negative charges. Right? JJ bar can be, I mean, it could happen that there is a uh, compact together in which you have equal number of uh, positive and negative chirality 
sehr sachliche Entscheidung. Ihr müsst jetzt das überlegen. So, I think I will stop there. Now, this calculation, I mean, I'm not worried about the normal lesson, but one can actually keep track of the normal lesson very precisely. And although the normal lesson is not important for determining whether supersymmetry is broken or not, when you actually use supersymmetry coherent, it's to calculate, for example, the two loop delay on that code in this vacuum. Okay. Then, this particular expression that we had, that we analyzed, that appears explicitly as one factor in that expression. Right. So, determining the normal lesson is useful. Because they actually use in computing the full of the letter. So, can you how will this V be written as Because what we said is that it can have a pole at V equal to 0. But the residue at the pole is proportional to this J bar. In the matter sector, the residue is proportional to J bar. And J bar expectation value is 0 because there are equal number of positive and negative charge states in the spectrum. So it's, that means that if there is a pole as a function of V and hence it must be a constant. Because the total is a function of log any pole is only a constant. Even if this constant is zero, which may happen that the next loop order it could happen. Yes. 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 Unless you can find an independent argument that, that will not happen. Right. It could happen that the next loop order. If this concept is non-zero, then we know that at, even at this loop level we have exactly that's the absolute super. So are there instead of things like where up to some order uh, super symmetry is broken, but at higher order it is restored? Well, not at higher order; it will be restored at this order only. Okay. Because basically at this order, one can check now so that you can shift fields oh, okay. to restore super. -symmetry. Right. So next week we will try to work on an example from a, the same example, right. and we will see that how there are actually three different uh, classical solutions in this case. One breaks possibly the other two. So if we had tried to do naive perturbation theory, then even if we had realized that PCO has to be inserted on the torus side, then we would have actually gotten zero, right? Because we would have taken the PC location to be constant and yeah. So if you are not taken into account as previous previous poles, then you will uh, get zero. Then you would have naively concluded that you will, you will get zero. Okay. But once you look, you take into account previous poles, you will see this problem. Right. In this sense, previous poles actually solve some useful problems, right? but they actually give uh, results which are uh, physically motivated. Without those previous poles, you wouldn't get this. Okay. 